if you're using minoxidil in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get 40% more regrowth without any additional medication or side effects. So I'm going to show you how you can go from something like this to something like this in the space of a few months. And why is this important? Well, it's important because minoxidil on its own is one of the weaker treatments on the market today. So the average user gets 7 to 15 new hairs per centimeter square, which is near the lower uh, rank of the various treatments in terms of efficacy. And roughly one out of two users will see no response, and 95% will quit within 12 months. I'll come back to that 95% figure shortly. But what this means for you is that if you start minoxidil on its own, what we call monotherapy, minoxidil monotherapy, the odds are stacked against you. The data suggests you won't do well and you will most likely quit. So the solution we're going to be looking at this in today's video is adding laser caps to minoxidil to unlock that 40% extra regrowth. So today's video basically has two legs. We have the minoxidil leg and the LLT leg. And first of all, we're going to look at minoxidil. Now, you obviously know what minoxidil is, what it does and all that. So I'm not going to re re repeat that here. Now, today, I just want to give you a bit of a higher level view. And the idea is that minoxidil monotherapy is a losing proposition, especially with a legacy formula. So especially if you're using a, a, a box standard formulation from 30, 35 years ago. And the reason it's a losing proposition is almost all published trials, all these lovely figures you see in the graphs and the charts, they're from clinical trial participants. So people that are in a clinical trial for three to six months under medical supervision, and they have a very high compliance. So they do what their doctor tells them, and they, they stick to the trial for three to six months, and then nobody knows what happens to them. But you, the person watching this video, you are not a clinical trial participant. You're a real life user, and this is a very different scenario. And Astonishingly, there's been thousands of studies on minoxidil, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm exaggerating, hundreds at least, probably thousands of hair loss studies and minoxidil, and literally only two or three have looked at this. That's, I'm being literal, two or three, and you can see a couple here. Now, I'm going to review briefly, I'm going to go over this study here, which is from 2007, and what these people did, this pair of uh, doctors, I believe, from Iran, they looked at the 1,495 men who were routine dermatology patients complaining of hair loss, of androgenetic alopecia. So these men were 20 to 40 years old. They had hair loss in the vertex, which is particularly amenable to treatment, and they had five years or less duration of hair loss. So relatively young, relatively early stage hair loss. So this was a very good uh, population to, for treatment. So what these doctors did, they followed up these people over time who weren't particip participating in any clinical trial. So 15 people quickly dropped out, leaving 1,480 patients in the trial. Now, two months in, only 653 patients were satisfied, and they gradually started dropping out. And by the end of the first 12 months, 95% of the patients had dropped out. And by the fifth year, five years in, out of 1,480 patients, one, that's zero one, still stayed uh, on treatment. And in this table, you can see here how this progressed over time. So you have less than two months in, a 10% dropout, and then two to four months in, at the end of four months, 29% cumulated dropout. At six months, more than half had dropped out. Then at 12 months, you go to the 95% dropout, two years, 99. And at the end of three years, just one person remained, which if you round it up, it's 100%. So I used to dabble a bit in Forex currency speculation. And in, in Forex, there's this common figure you'll hear thrown around that 95% of people that get involved with Forex lose money. So it's a losing game. And this always reminds me of Minoxidil. And the question is, why is the dropout rate so high? Why did 95% of men quit? Now, that happens for various reasons. Some can't be bothered, whatever side effects. But fundamentally, the number one reason is that minoxidil on its own just does not give enough hair to justify continuing the treatment. So that means if you want to beat the odds, if you want to escape that 5%, you have to boost regrowth. You have to get more hairs per centimeter square out of your minoxidil. Otherwise, the data says you're going to quit. And this is where the second arm of today's video comes in, LLLT. 
So let's have a look at LLLT. So LLLT stands for low level laser therapy. And now that's what well, that was the original term. Now, most people refer to it as low level light therapy. And low means as in low intensity. So this isn't a very high intensity uh, light. It's a low intensity light. This originally was developed in the 1960s. A researcher, I believe, was trying to cure cancer and he was working with lasers and then one of the lasers was broken so it didn't emit full power. And then he discovered that that broken laser tended to regrow hair in, in, in rats. And that's how the whole idea got started. And this has various applications in medicine, uh, various skin conditions, but um, number one is hair loss. And it was cleared by the FDA for male pattern hair loss in 2007. And now 15, 20 years later, we have a very wide range of devices. You can see them on Amazon. These are marketed and they are safe, non-invasive and painless. And the attraction of LLT is you can use it on its own or you can combine it with other treatments. And it's super good for combining it with other treatments. Uh, because it takes so little of your time and it's got no side effects. So you can basically mix it with anything you want. And what's the mechanism of action? Now, we don't know for sure what the mechanism of action, but these devices emit red to infrared light. Uh, so you have on the one hand, you have violet light, ultraviolet. And then on the other side of the visible spectrum, you have red, infrared. So these are at the top side of the spectrum, red and infrared light. And it's generally believed that they boost the hair follicle cellular energy, ATP. So with more energy, the follicles are able to make thicker, longer hairs. They can extend their antigen growth phase. They're also thought to improve blood flow and reduce irritation. Now, before we continue, I just want to place both of these treatments, LLT and minoxidil, in the broader hair loss cascade, which you can see here. So at the root, at the base of the hair loss cascade, we have scalp tension, okay? Chronic scalp tension. And this scalp tension affects certain parts of the scalp more than others. And the ones it affects the most are the temples, the crown area, and then the top of the head. And of course, the, the whole frontal area. So these are the parts of the head that bolt uh, faster, especially the temples and the crown. Okay, and then this chronic uh, scalp compression, this chronic scalp tension triggers inflammation. And this inflammation in turn triggers, activates, hyperactivates the DHT. Then the DHT triggers another protein called transforming growth factor beta 1. And the DHT working with this protein, they they induce what's called fibrosis. So by fibrosis, we mean microscopic scar tissue, literally excess collagen that hardens up just like, just like visible scar tissue. And this happens in the scalp at a microscopic scale. So the result is that the scalp becomes thin, hard, and stiff, and it loses its natural uh, structure. And that in turn reduces the growth space of the hair follicles and it impairs blood flow, and it also compromises the structural integrity of the hair follicle. And this is where both minoxidil and LLT uh, come in. So they both deal uh, at this point in the hair loss cascade, relatively downstream, but they can still be quite effective. And just rounding out the hair loss cascade, uh, eventually the hair follicles miniaturize, and then you have the visible pattern that gives rise to the term uh, male pattern hair loss. So now that we've placed both of these treatments, uh, let's go to the million dollar question. So the million dollar question is, will adding the LLT to minoxidil really boost the regrowth or is it just a waste of time and money? And the reason we want to ask this is sometimes in various research papers, at various branches of, uh, of, uh, of human health, but especially in hair loss, you get results that aren't very believable. So for example, you get some, you know, uh, very hyped up studies, sometimes even by the makers of these devices. So you have to take everything with a pinch of salt. So to help us answer this question, we go back to the LLT literature and we look at a brand new, so brand spanking 2025 paper that was just released 
And I want to thank the lead author of the paper for sending me the PDF because it was behind a paywall. So the title of this brand new paper is Comparative Efficacy and Safety of Low-Level level Laser Therapy and Topical Minoxidil Combination versus Topical Minoxidil Monotherapy and Androgenetic Alopecia Management, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So this paper compared Minoxidil Monotherapy versus Minoxidil Plus LLT, and it was a meta-analysis. So what is a meta-analysis? A meta-analysis is a study of studies. So it's a study that looks at all other, uh, various other studies and combines their data and then gives you one big result. And meta-analysis is a very strong uh, research method because each single study on its own is relatively weak, especially for hair loss where you have, you know, sometimes small samples, contradictory results. But meta-analysis combines all these studies and it pools the data and you end up with a massively increased data sh set which allows you for higher confidence. So we, we give more attention to meta-analysis than individual studies. So what did these researchers do? Well, they searched uh, various academic and medical databases like Medline, clinicaltrials.gov, et cetera. And they found studies that allocated, randomly allocated men and women with adrogenic alopecia to either minoxidil monotherapy or the combination of minoxidil plus LLT. So every single person in these seven studies got minoxidil. The difference is that some of them also got LLLT, and most studies ran for a few months. And what were the results? Well, the results of the meta-analysis showed that stacking LLLT on top of minoxidil improves regrowth. And the average difference was 6.6 .6 hairs per centimeter square. So 6.6 .6 hairs over minoxidil monotherapy. And this was a roughly 40 to 50% increase in hairs, which you can see in the bar chart I've made for you here. And the researchers also found there was a small increase in the hair shaft thickness. So in other words, the hair shaft diameter actually become a, became a bit thicker on average, though this difference was very small. So you had the uh, higher density, the more hairs regrown, plus they were slightly thicker. So this as you can imagine, it led to generally higher treatment satisfaction to the people for the people that received the combination versus those that received the monotherapy. And there was no difference in side effects between the two groups, as you would expect, because LLT, generally speaking, generally speaking, does not have side effects. So the conclusions, I'm going to read a bit from the study here. Our systematic review and meta-analysis revealed that the combination therapy of LLT and topical minoxidil is more effective than topical minoxidil alone for treating androgenetic alopecia, as indicated by a significantly greater increase in hair density and average hair diameter. And further down, they say, the results of our study indicated that the incorporation of LLT alongside with topical minoxidil may enhance outcomes for patients with androgenetic alopecia. So, that was their takeaway. So this study helps us answer the million dollar question with a pretty high degree of certainty that yes, it is worth it. And yes, it is real. And it's not a waste of uh, time and money. So the question obviously in your mind is, what does this look like in real life? Now this was a meta-analysis, so they didn't have any pictures, but for the pictures, we turned to an earlier study from 2018 the effectiveness of adding low-level light therapy to minoxidil 5% solution in the treatment of patients with androgenetic alopecia. And here you can see the photo I showed you at the start. This guy here, 32-year-old male, at the start of treatment, and then at the bottom right, you can see 12 months after treatment, a very substantial regrowth. This lady here presents with the classic symptoms of female pattern hair loss. You see the white part. So where she parts her hair, that part becomes very wide because the hair thins profusely. And then you can see it again, 12 months later, she had a, quite a substantial regrowth. And there, here, we have another 32-year-old male. He didn't have such a dramatic result, but here again, you can see how he was at the beginning and then after 12 months of, of regrowth. Again, there was a noticeable regrowth. So to turn back to the question we asked at the start, yes, this thing does work. And what's our take? Our take is that it does work. The gains are modest, but they are real. So you get more hairs and slightly increased thickness. And this might be enough to get you out of that 5% that stick with minoxidil um, to get you 
to improve your chances to escape uh, the majority that quit minoxidil. And the, the big thing, the big plus is that you, you achieve this boost without any drug side effects, without messing up your hormones or anything like that. And obviously consistency is key. You have to do this depending on the device three to four times a week, maybe two, it depends on the device for six months minimum. And the quality of the device obviously matters. Uh, they're not all made the same. So if you don't want to use finasteride, which is the obvious, um, the obvious add-on treatment from minoxidil, if you don't want to use finasteride for whatever reason, this is really a, a, good, a good choice for you. Obviously manage your expectation. This is not a miracle cure and it's unlikely that you will get all your hair back, but you still can see noticeable regrowth. So I want to thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to subscribe, like, and share it, this video. It's important for the algorithm. And if you have any questions, make sure to uh, hit me up in the comments. I'll see you next time. Take care.